Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this uh, special session. Uh, it is our pleasure to, to share this session, uh, myself and uh, together with Dr. Uh, Maria Teresa Izquierdo. And um, this session uh, will be focused on the ablation of idiopathic left ventricular artery arrhythmias. And we will have um, some of the most important leaders in, in the field that will touch every one of them. And um, we will start with uh, a good friend of us, which is Fermin Garcia, that will talk about ablation of ventricular arrhythmias from the left ventricular submit. Fermin. Okay. Uh, buenos días o buenas tardes. Uh, mi nombre es Fermín y primero le quiero dar las gracias al doctor Pérez, al doctor Guerra por la invitación y, y que sea suficiente decir que, que me siento muy emocionado de estar aquí en España y, y, y con ustedes. Voy a hacer mi charla en inglés para los, um, los colegas. Uh, y mi tópico es Ablation of Ventricular Arrhythmias from LV Summit. Um, the first concept that we have to clarify here is what are we talking about and what is the anatomical definition of LV summit. And this is pretty simple. This comes from the original description of McAlpine, which was a cardiac surgeon that did beautiful anatomical work. And in 1971, he termed the summit of the left ventricle simply the highest point of the LV. And I love this picture of the left ventricle because, in my opinion, this is where arrhythmias come from. It's the left ventricle is located right at the top. So now moving forward, every time you see this yellow arrow means LV summit, and you will see why I say this. And then he says this point, it's above the upper interventricular groove, which is right here, the interventricular groove. And the aortic portion of the LV ostium. And the LV ostium, it's in green. And this is the second concept that's very important for ventricular arrhythmias that somehow involve the left ventricle, which is the LV ostium. And this point, right here in between this and this, it's what he called the LV summit. That's it. That's the definition. Now, of course, a lot of people prefer to see the ventricle like this with the aorta on the center, the pulmonary artery, the left coronary cause, the non-coronary cause, the AMC. But the reality is that none of these structures have ventricular muscle. This is just the way we access the green area, which is the LV ostium. Now, however you want to see it, see it with the aorta and the mitral valve or without the aorta and the mitral valve, we're going to be talking about things that are around here. And that's the simple definition. Now, the second thing as electrophysiologists now that we have to understand, it's what are the anatomical considerations so we can do the ablation? And what are the challenges? Well, this is the LV ostium. We call that yellow arrow in the top. Now, this is a beautiful cut because it opens your eyes to the fact that this is not only this point right here we're talking about, but there is a thickness to it. And the relationship with the left coronary cause, because it gets in very close proximity to this portion of the LV ostium, but the main limitation, if we think of this as an epicardial structure or an epicardial point, is the fact that the circulation of the coronary arteries runs right by it. And this is very important to understand because it will not allow us to map from the epicardium. And you can see here the LAD with diagonals, a ramus intermedius, and a circumflex covering the area of the LV ostium. So this has commonly been known as the inaccessible area because if you go there from the epicardium, you're not going to be able to map or if you're able to map, you're not going to be able to ablate. Moreover, 
the last challenging points around the coronary arteries is the fact that this is covered by fat. So if you think about this point right here and you have the coronaries on top and this is covered by fat, it will be very difficult to map this area from the epicardium. So a second important concept as electrophysiologists that we need to understand for this is how to use the coronary venous circulation to give us access to this area. And this is an important concept. The arrhythmias don't come from the great cardiac vein or the AIV. We map the LV summit from the great cardiac vein or the AIV because the relationship in blue, you can see the coronary venous circulation with the artery. And again, the yellow arrow represents the LV summit right here. So you could theoretically put a mapping catheter or an ablation catheter either in the AIV, the great cardiac vein, or somewhere in between, and find indirectly what gets you closer to this point because now you're below the coronary circulation and below the fat. So this is probably the best thing we have from the standpoint of getting access to this area. So when we talk now uh, about how can we map this and we look at this area, we need to understand what we like to call neighbors. So once again, if this is the LV summit, and theoretically, you could say the arrhythmia is just exiting this way or it's very close to here, but it could theoretically be coming from somewhere in this ventricular tissue. And I will show you what I mean by that. But in any case, you could map this from the epicardium directly with the limitations that I said, but sometimes you get lucky, and I'll show you when you get lucky, or the coronary venous circulation. You could map this from the left coronary cusp, you could map this from the LV endocardium below the left coronary cusp, either by a retrograde fashion or by a transeptal fashion. And it's all a matter of how you get better contact here. Or if you look at this beautiful image, this artery has a septal perforator, so you could actually map or ablate from inside the septal perforators from the artery or the veins. And we'll see more about that. And don't forget, if you think about the right ventricle as a separate component, you don't really understand the ventricular anatomy. The right ventricle septal wall, it's very close to the left ventricle wall. So some of these arrhythmias that look like typical RV outflow tract, the reality is they're closer to the LV area. And this LV summit arrhythmia, which theoretically would come from here, could be ablated right below the pulmonic valve, and I will show you more about this. So you need to understand these five anatomical areas when you're going to target arrhythmias that originate or that are mapped best to the LV summit. So how to do it? Well, the first step, and I'm going to simplify this a lot because there's a lot of algorithms and a lot of ways to look at EKG. This is what I teach my fellows, and this is what I think is practical. The first step in every VT ablation is to understand the EKG. Once again, the yellow arrow. And I have a concept that if that arrhythmias come from this area, they're going to be on the left side of the midline. So they're always going to have a bigger negative component in lead one, and they're always going to be more negative in AVL than AVR. They're usually left bundle branch block with transition before or at B3, B3, B2, or V1, so they're right bundle branch block. And they can come from here and what I call the downslope of the LV summit. This EKG is very different than the rest of the EKGs. And this is the classic pattern. It's an aflo track arrhythmia, left side of the midline because it's negative in one and more negative in AVL than AVR. When, when you pay attention to this area, this is a QS pattern in V1, a QS pattern in one, and a QS pattern in V2 that's deeper than V1, so there's some sort of pattern break because it suddenly becomes positive in lead V3. 
This is a classic EKG or something that is in the downslope epicardial aspect. It fits all the epicardial criteria for QS in one V1 and V2, but transition before, before, before V4, so V3. And this, it's important to recognize, which is very different than something that it's on this side of the LV summit or at the LV summit, in which the ECG is similar. It has a more negative component in one, more AVL than AVR, alpha track, but now look at Lead one has an R wave, V1 has an R wave, V2 has an R wave, and it starts transitioning in V3. But we call this pattern break very helpful here. The R wave on V2, it's bigger than the R wave in V1, and the S wave is deeper. So this talks about something that is right in front of lead V2 on the chest, but not epicardial, because there is an R wave. This is the difficult EKGs. This is the ones we felt and why we became so interested on this concept. Finally, for this type of things, as you get closer to the top of the LV ostium, as I like to call it, and some people call it top of the mitral valve, call it however we want, but this is anatomy, you get earlier transition, almost right bundle branch block like, and the same type of EKG that you would see when you're very basal. Finally, if you now come on this side of the line, you are on the right side of the midline, your EKG is completely different. It's positive in one, it's more negative in AVR than AVL. So anything that is on the septal side, call it right coronary cusp, Parahesian area, posterior ventricle, posterior RVOT, it has a completely different EKG. And this is very important and very simple. All these rules apply to the RVOT, except the RVOT always transition is after V3. So it's going to be V4 or V5. And this is how we approach this. So if I see an EKG that looks like this, I say, all right, we're going to have trouble today. We're going to start mapping the LV Austin, the LV Summit. And our first step that we just published in a, in a review paper is to understand the venous anatomy. And we do a very careful, good venogram. We get access with an agilus sheath, and then we do a very good venogram because not only recently we become interested in the anatomy here, it's easier to push catheters here for mapping if you have control of the circulation with a sheath and a wire that if you pull push blindly, you can perforate and then you get an effusion because this area bleeds a lot since there is just thin veins there. And then we've been liking now to try to map intramurally and epicardial because if you can map outside and inside, you can clearly define better your target. And I'll show you more. For this, we use what we, it's called the vision wire. It's made by Biotronic. You can connect it to the Brook or whatever mapping system, uh, I'm sorry, um, recording system you use, and even to, to the mapping system. And then we selectively can cannulate these branches and put the wires in this area. And I'll show you how this becomes useful for this. The importance of understanding the anatomy of the vein is that it's highly variable. The most common locally is this one in which the gray cardiac vein and the AIV are on the left side of the LAD, but they could come cross on top and be all sort of different anatomy. And this is why we like to define very well when we're mapping here, because it's the, the, the only way you're going to be able to, to carefully ablate here. So these are some examples of this. So we thought of an LV summit PVC, we have the EKG characteristics. First step, we do the venogram, and then we put a catheter through the agilus, a four French mapping catheter, either a quadripolar or a decapolar in the gray cardiac vein or the AIV, and then we put a wire inside of one of the branches or two branches, and we look at the activation. In this particular case, it becomes clear that the activation is earlier in the epi aspect than in the intramural aspect. So we decide to give it a try, and we put our ablation catheter there, and the next step is to look at the coronary angiograms, and if you're far away from any 
type of arterial circulation, this is a good day for you, this is a good day for the patient because you may be able to ablate this area easily from a vein. And this usually works even if you don't have the ability to apply high power. However, that doesn't happen all the time. This is more of a basal location, at least in the ECG, and we map the vein, and the vein looks way earlier. The base map for that vein, I'm sorry, the endocardium opposite to that, and this is another concept. If you are here and you cannot apply, you map inside. So the reason is this. If you are on top of a coronary circulation, you won't be able to apply from outside. So this concept came across that if you can target the opposite side, you may be able to target that area, even if your activation is later, as you can see here, and the pace map for this particular spot is not as good as if you are outside. However, this only works if the distance between these two catheters is not very big. So it has to be less than 1.4, 1.3 centimeters. And you can think about it in the anatomy. If this is too thick, there's no way you can penetrate. If this is not that thick, you may be able to penetrate. This is basically the same thing from the Stevenson group, in which they look at the endo and epi activation, meaning from the gray cardiac vein and from the endocardium. If the arrhythmia comes closer to the endocardium, they got this distance. They call the interval between these two points less than seven milliseconds because it's closer to the endo than the epi. If you were to apply a lesion from the endo and you are closer to here, this is going to work. However, if your site of origin is closer to the epi, now this distance is more than seven milliseconds. You're going to fail because if you apply from here, this is probably too thick and the epi origin it's closer to the surface of the LV summit, this lesion is not going to work. So this approach doesn't work all the time. It works sometimes. And this is a very nice example. This we map outside, we map inside. This time we're even earlier in the endo. And we like to see this in echo because echo helps a lot. You can see here our catheter right at that top area of the LV ostium below the left coronary cusp. Right here, we're much earlier than the decapolar catheter outside. This is a patient that the origin of the arrhythmia on the LV summit is closer to the intramural segment. It's not an epicardial origin. You may be able to get away with it, but you have to map. Another concept is the concept of the perforators. And the only reason I show this is because you need to understand how close the RV below the pulmonic valve is to the LV septum and the veins and arteries that perforate in the septum because you can use this for mapping and for ablation. This is what we found. If you start looking inside of the intramural segment and not just in the epi, you will find frequently these potentials. In this case, we put the wire in the perforator and you can see that wire it's much earlier than even the endo, and it was earlier than the epi, although I don't have that catheter here because we just use the wire. We map outside and then we move it inside. The distance here, it's helpful to know because you can apply from the endo and get closer inside, right opposite to that wire. Pace map was very good. The critical concept here, like for any ablation procedure, so you have to have careful attention to contact force. We look at contact force, the arrow at the tip of the catheter has to be pointing up, and you're right opposite to that wire that has the earliest activation. We could not apply here on the epi. Even if we apply on the epi, it may not work. So not all LV summit are truly epi. I think the more we map, we realize that there's a lot of intracardial component. So if you were to say, I'm going to apply heart lesion here, it's better, in my opinion, to do careful mapping so we know where we're going to blade and where we're going to hit harder if we need to. This area also may work very well, as described by Fife and by coming transeptal. 
whatever you prefer. I don't care if you're transeptal or you're retrograde, you just need to get there and have good contact. This is the concept of RVOT. So what I'm showing here is we put the catheter where we thought was better. And you can see this catheter, it's in the AIV. This is the equivalent on the carton map of the catheter in that AIV. You see it goes down. So probably it's inside of a septal branch. This is carto sound. When this sound image or this eyes image cuts the tip of the catheter, you're going to see a green dot on this side. This is the RVOT. This is the LVOT. So you can see how close this catheter is to the septal portion of the RVOT. So now this anatomy may vary from patient to patient, and this is why we insist so much in the understanding of anatomy, but why eyes is so useful, because every patient is different. So you need to understand these five spots that you can map. So when you get to your patient, you say, which is the best spot for my patient? Because it's not the same spot for the patient that you ablated yesterday or the week before. And this all makes sense. If you look at the anatomy from McAlpine, this is the LAD, this is the pulmonic valve. If you're right below the pulmonic valve, this is what you have. This is intramural area, this is LV, this is RV, this would be pulmonic valve and right below. This is right coronary cusp, left coronary cusp. Very close to each other, but very variable between patient and another. This was a challenging patient. He came in, we have thought, and this happens frequently. We get a lot of referrals of patients that they, they, it was thought they had RV outflow tract PVCs or VT, and they ablated in the RV outflow tract and they failed, so they referred to PEN. And this is how we became interested in this, because we said, oh, all right, we go back to the RV outflow tract, we also failed. Because it's not coming from there, it's coming from inside this tissue. So if you ablate here in the RV outflow tract, once again, you may modify the exit a little bit, you may suppress it, and it comes back in 10 or 15 minutes, which happens to all of us, because it's coming from here. And in order to do that, you have to ablate from the opposite side. This was a patient that initially looked early in the RV outflow tract. We burned there, we remap, and now it looked early in the LV. So it requires ablation from both sides. You can see the catheter here in the RV, the catheter here in the LV. It would be one catheter here, one catheter here. So you're opposite to each other. So what's the risk? I think the risk of everything I'm saying, my main concern is not perforation. Perforation, you have to be careful when you map the veins. It's the coronary arteries because you can damage the coronary arteries by burning from the gray cardiac vein. I already said that. In this patient, we're just mapping, we didn't even ablate, and the patient has spasm of the circulation. And you have to be prepared for this. You have to be prepared with intracoronary nitro, or you have to be prepared to wire this in case there is thrombosis. If you're going epi, you never want to do this. You don't want that catheter crossing this way to the coronary artery. If you're going to burn from the epi, you want the catheter to be parallel. And this is why this decapolar catheter is too helpful once you define the relationship of the AIV and the LAD, because you stay on the side that doesn't have the LAD. So we like to do this. We put that decapolar, when you take the picture, you stay on the side of this. You don't go to this side. Excuse me, Dr. Garcia, two minutes. Maybe oh, you okay. can sum up, please. Yeah, no, this is my last slide. The th second thing, it's above the pulmonary vein, the pulmonary valve. I am very careful. I don't like to do it because the LAD runs through there. But finally, if you are in the anterior RVOT, you also have to be very careful. Because when you look at eyes, and this is another useful thing for eyes, is this is the RVOT. This right here is the LAD. So this could be very close. And a big, powerful lesion here could damage the LAD. And if you don't believe it, I'll show it to you. This is, this is a fan of the RV going up and down, and this arrow here follows the LAD from the origin on the left coronary cusp, the left main, and all the way down. So you can have exactly the distance from the endocardium to the LAD. 
And then you can even do this with cartosan and we reconstruct the LED. Because if this distance is bigger than five millimeters or so, you're probably okay. But if this distance is less than five millimeter, you can have this problem. And this is a patient that got ablation in the anterior VOT for an LV summit PVC that looked minus 15 milliseconds, and they were doing high power ablations, and the patient developed thrombosis of the LAD at the mid level with ST elevation. And this is ablation from the RVOT, so you have to be very careful. So the highest point of the LV is called the LV summit. It's epicardial bounded by the coronary arteries. I think a lot of these arrhythmias are more intramural than epicardial. I think you need to perform detail mapping on all these sites that I talked, because if you're going to consider high power lesions, you need to know where to apply the high power lesions. And these lesions need to be good contact, especially good contact lesions. I think we tend to do higher power lesions are more prolonged sometimes. I think all these concepts are critical if we're going to move to bipolar ablation, intramural lesions of some sort with needles, alcohol injection. Finally, be careful. Left atrial appendage doesn't work, even though if it's on top of the LV summit. Epicardial is usually not helpful because of what I said, and it doesn't matter what you do, be aware and be careful of the coronary arteries. Thank you very much. You move, move to Thank the you. second, or Who? you want a question? No, the question is at the end of the session. Okay. The second talk by Dr. Fifa Noyang is about left fascicular tachycardia, the typical and the challenging. Dear Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, so some, uh, it is my pleasure here. So my topic is left uh, ventricular fascicular tachycardia, the typical and the challenge. So we know the the fascicular the fascicular tachycardia is one of the perchangial associated tachycardia. So perchangial is left ventricle is sometimes by bundle tachycardia, fascicular tachycardia. This is my topic. Some associated with the perchangial like the popular muscle. As my friend Frank Bogan, we talk about the issues. The the fascicular tachycardia, left and fascicular type, three different types. The first, the common one, is so-called posterior fascicular tachycardia. So the ECG presents so-called is 90%. It's most easy like the right bundle bundle morphology with superior axis. Okay, the second one, just from the, the second type, just say from anti-fascicular. So the right bundle morphology serves on the pre-coding recording and the inferior axis. The very extreme layer one is so-called up septal ventricular tachycardia with almost narrow chemistry morphology, similar with SAS ECG with the very large chemistry. These three different types of tachycardia always most likely can terminate by the vilapamine intravenous. If you give vilapamine terminal, you can see tachycardia get slowed down and terminal tachycardia. So the tachycardia first unit was demonstrated by the Dr. Zipes, the nineteen seventy line. So initially, if I pass atrial, I can induce the tachycardia. This is all cases. If pass atrial, but induce atrial tachycardia. So we, we did a study in the full, in the China, the full right hospital. So we have one, almost 120 cases. So the, the tachycardia only induced by atrials, we induce about nine to 10 percent. So this tachycardia, if you think of fascicular tachycardia, if you can't induce by ventricular pace, so you have think for the atrial pace, it can induce tachycardia. Induced atrial, so you normally see during atrial induction, the tachycardia you see, during the atrial induction, you see the H, the his bundle before QS morphology. Induced tachycardia, you can sometimes you can see the his inside the QS, sometimes you see the his, the ventricular his, the merge with the ventricular uh, activation one. If you use his, look for his activation, you see, you can know where the ventricular, the, the tachycardia exit. So we define three different parts. Okay, if you look for during tachycardia, we look for the his, the, the his activation of the HV interval. If the HV interval more than 15 seconds, it definitely from, is absurd. With this, we use fluoro, this left ventricle, from apical to left ventricle basis, we define three different parts. So if you define three parts, so if the HV interval is more than 15 seconds, they will cause the opposite of the ventricle tachycardia. If HV 
in the world, during the VTs, they know to, like, so time these six people care, they will just be not left behind the area. So if HV in the world, if less than 15 milliseconds, they will cause the basis is positive fascicular lesions. So the, whole, the operation was with the initial the operation was damaged by the uh, Oklahoma group, just say, we found during cells, the per potential before the cells, the distal part, most located in distal area. So during tire cardio, the per reverse before the KVS, look for early aspiration, you can terminate tire cardio. So we did the first case, operation tire, the, the first as 90, maybe 1999. The first patient had a three time ablation before. So we had, we tried mapping tire cardio. In the left ventricle, positive fascicle, and you see here that the, the brown port was, have, had a percentage area. The yellow port, the left bound, his, the left his area. So we found the left ventricle medial is the medial part. We found in here the mapping county of mapping tire cardio, the mechanical termination. During the map, we found he during tire cardio, you see, have two components. So this we circle one, the dash potential, some kind called P1, like from Japanese logami called P1 potential. The second component, the sharp, the, is called P2 potential. It's called percangio activation. If you go somewhere distal, you see this, sometimes continuous, very low amplitude area located here. So we make map, map them here in this area, one semitone, the activation is very, very slow conduction, almost more than 110 milliseconds. So the patient VT we can induce. So we know the patient have two components, so-called one, we initially call electrical, electrical percentage potential, some people are called P1. So what we normally typical finding in the person is fast type cardio. So all typical finding is the abnormal, the activation in the post fast area. So you see here, this like so the Japanese group, Logami, he was sort of the leading the, the opinion, opinion for the fascicular type cardio. He found in patients, in all 76 to 70 percent patients, he found so the, the, so the, the, the first P1 potential and the second one, the P2 potential, in the most 60, 70 percent patients. So in this patient, during VT, he gave very small doses of velapamine here. So he get 1.5 milligrams of IV, the milligram of velapamine. During type cardio, it gets slowed down. The most strong down is from P1 to P2. You see the before the is 18, it's 23. It's no significant change. The most change is from P2 to P1. So his hypothesis have two tire cardio. So two, the, the P1 presents so-called later some of the, the percentage fibers, the P1's anticular fibers. So the, his hypothesis. So we did the same one issues. We map the patient during tire cardio, during sinus. In all patients, the first in the 10 patients, we published 2002 in the circulation. 10 patients we found in during cells, we mapped. So if this complete the, 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 per, the left ventricle during cells, this left ventricle, this is the basis, this is his bundle, so the positive fascicle, this part, anti fascicle. In the mid part, it's very, very difficult to judge which one is positive fascicle, which one's anti fascicle. In the interest in on all patients, we found the smaller dural cells, the sharp, have low, very low, high, fre high frequency, very low amplitude after the ventral activation we found in the old patients. So some patients put a single potential in the fact that some put multiple components in some patients. So you find the potential and we see the potential area sometimes located the cartel map, you see, it's located, some patient located in the central part, some patient in the located posterior, some patient is located anterior, some patient located up, the area. So the, the location area is something different. The potential is here, located here. So the, this is what the timing is always like the before the T-band morphology, the time, like say, well, the earliest one, the well, 130 to 250 milliseconds. So this was a new machine that before we used a new that the, 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 you see if you, you have if you look for the potential, you have used amplifier, make amplifier make very, very bigger. Is here this is a dual size, the fascicle type cardio, this is a left ventricle, same one, you find a small, very, very small, the sharp half the potential after the potential potential area. After the small area. So normally the patients 
with the interest it pays here, it found a pays here, it found the decremental conduction. You see, it pays the base sex 510 milliseconds, the component here, and slowly decremental area. So in initial, we did study in Humboldt. We have 24 pages. We mapped the left ventricle here, and the after, before the complete map, it's only three pages can induce. So it means during after extensive map area, the page VT can induce for. Means the VT is close in the superficial is area. The second one is here. This is the, the second study just said the people say we can if we can map left ventricle, we can induce. So I use multiple decal polar cancer. The multiple the polar cancer map left ventricle because the cast is very small with gentle before left ventricle map. So normally the same what we find is dual sense. The decay polar cast in the left ventricle area is the core cells, is the left ventricle in the left left ventricle be the part. So during induced VT, you see, during the first cells, you see the percentage component before the case morphology. Induced VT, you see the P1 potentials in located in the small area, and you see the fascicle potential, the P2, just before the case morphology. It's almost the same finding like we are the six percent, seven percent we found. And you see here, if you move the catheter, sample far to anterior, you lose the P1, the P2, the components. So the P1, P2 component use a multiple cast map. It's most like defined, if we define here, they were different, ten different area, like I say, the different, ten, most located in the, in the area, like I say, the third one, the fourth and third area. The case morphology, we induce VT, most 120 B6. 130 to 150 milliseconds, the durations. It's, it's not very wide level of cable morphology. You find the potential, you can see dual ventricle pace is the same one. You see, dual ventricle pace, the component is S1, S2, and decremental and induced component, the morphology. And you can entrain the, the component, you can use this seed, the tight cardio. The other one, just in patient, you cannot find the potential. So we say we can do entrainment. If we induce tachycardia, we pay different seconds. For right ventricle, it's 305, 300, 290, 270. You see chaos morphology, it can more change, continue change morphology, pay different seconds. This means the progressions, fusion, with the pace maneuvers, indicate the tachycardia is macro tachycardia. The second way common finding, just say the soul conduction the conduction in the post fascicle during silence. You see, we found the patient in the during silence patient. In the patient, one group is a patient with the active, so uh, with the VT, one case with just normal age match, so a superventral tachycardia. We found the patient, the RS wave in the AVA lead, you see, in the 57%, in the IVD group, only 14%. Especially if patient get patient during excess ECG, increase heart rate fast, you see the always the AVA need is sickly change. Is the A, is is keep the three inferior need, you see the RFS increase, the AVA need, the keep the S wave it can depression. Indicate the positive fascicle is conduction, increase heart rate. The second one issue is we just say if put the patient in the patient with the IVT. We put the map because in the positive fascicle, we pace atrial, it's, it's a different pace, with pace S1, S2, S3, the different cycles. It's a dual cells, we have one cast in the his bundle, we have one map because no can left ventricle positive fascicle area. You see dual baseline, it conducts 20 B seconds, dual S2, the cycles not too much change. The third one, you see the cycles, if the, S, the cycles get short, the increase the D1, the fourth one, the, the percentage potential moved the ventricle potential indicate have so conduction during pace, the same like during excess ECG. The same one with, with your map in during the sinus rhythms. So with your map size with the with the map the, the complete cut map the left ventricle, the left ventricle is from his anti fascicle, post fascicle, so all friends from the Beijing, the Angel Hospital did the studies. In twenty five patients with the anti passive ventricle type cardio. Typical positive fascicular tachycardia. So the activation, he measured activation time in anti fascicular and post fascicular. He found all patients in the post fascicular activation time is much longer compared to anti fascicular. The conduction velocity 
was short, was reduced in the old patient with anti fat sickle cell. It's more interesting when this we did a study. If map just say if we know the over cell conduction, what is cell conduction? So we did all the other 25 patients in the anti anti pass ventricular tachycardia in patient no not any aberration before. So we found 23 patients. You see, it close is the positive fascicle area. You found a fragmented fascicle potential area. We found almost like so. During sinus, we found almost 9, 25 patients, 23 patients, we found potential. This location on the distal part, 19, some like close possible, come anterior, is 4 patients is in the area. The interest is here, induced VT, we found the fragment potential area, induced ventricular tachycardia, and you see some patients present the P1 and the P2, the compora, at this area. So most patients after map area, the VT never induced anymore. The third one just say, how do you abrasion the V20 tachycardia? So, so the, the, you can say, if you find the decapolar cancer, you find the that potential, the P1, you burn, the junction, P1, P2, the junction part, you see, you get abrasion, EB terminate tachycardia. You find the P1 potential, is continue, P broke P1, P2, and later during size, you find a, comp you find a component. But however, it's not the cases. Most cases, after mechanical probe, you can't induce the tachycardia anymore. So what we do, some guys say we say, okay, if we know the tachycardia cross is positive fascicle, so the cross passing, we make, we make just a positive fascicle block. The initial study we did in China. So we have 29 patients. Just say we did a positive fascicle block. So most patients, 38 patients. It's not because it's excellent the data. However, how do you make the lesion? How do you make the linear lesion post fast? You can make up, you can make down, you can make a mid middle part. So if the circles are here, if maybe the lesion is a closed circle, they will not induce VT anymore. So if the circle, if you make a linear lesion above the circle, the tachycardia will avoid no change. So if you make the circle lesions above the linear lesion above the circle, the tachycardia before it may be changed. I showed a few examples. Maybe some, no, no, I show here. This is an example. So this is from the Xiang Chen group. He did one VT. Typical antibiotic ventricular tachycardia, the typical sense of morphology, the first VT, so the left positive fascicle attack. He did two applications here. The VT morphology change, tifa is right bound morphology, it's the free axis. Okay, this activation map, you see here, he make a first addition here, and I change the complete here. So he moved the center above and terminal ventricular tachycardia. So we, for me, the best ablation tachycardia is based on the fascicle tachycardia. So you look for the map, look for fragment potential, either if you find a circle smaller, so later you can predict the P1 during cells with combined per kind of potential during cells. Or you find a fragmented area during science. It's the best target. If you find the area, you target here, nobody you can induce VT. This is we did a study in the long-term follow-up in the Hamburg group. We have 24 patients. We target only the so-called the during science, the late so the P1 potential. During being 10 years over 9 years follow-up, the most patients have low recurrence. On two patients, they before in, induce abdural cells and do recalls, the redo, not any recalls anymore. The more important one is the issue here. So if you have the ventricular tachycardia up here, sometimes you induce a very other funny VT, so we call opposite ventricular tachycardia. This is the, the demons by Logami here. He circled the ECG. Most patients, if you see G here, they base the sinus here. After post post fascicle tachycardia, you see the surface is a G inferior change. They get R wave, get Q R wave very clear, and induce the, this is before the VT, the second VT, almost the same size. Some patients, this is the definition, the circular post fascicle VT. You see, the ECG show line of case morphology of the normal or close right axis deviations. Induce, you can untrammed here, they must land tricardial. All VT is with how much sensitivity? The VT. So this is a typical finding, like here, the before. This is a case of low ablation before, showed ECG, have RS pattern in the infinite, induced VT, almost similar with sinus. 
Well, I mean, we have experience. We did, a, we recently published one paper in the European Heart Journals. So we have 10 cases. Most patients have low ablation, five patients low ablation. Five patients had ablation for the post fasting VT. So cases. So ECG, this is ECG, the surface ECG. The number three and number four low ablation before. Most patients present either insensitivity or persistent VT. Okay? This is a patient two and the, the patient after post fasting tachycardia most present toxic ventricular tachycardia. So we did a map here. The ventricular tachycardia is found only the potential potential. You see, you either use a natural approach, use a transceptor approach, and you see here burn found only the percutaneous potential here, and you can see the tachycardia you can term it. The interest here, during the map, the person, the patient, you can change the morphology during the mechanical one. This is the patient. You have fifty percent of the patient. During the map, you can change the ventricular tachycardia morphology. We show you here why we change the morphology. You see here, this is the initial the, the circle opposite the ventricular tachycardia, and after map here, the change the case morphology is total axis, different axis, inferior axis here. So the both, both the, the, here is the mechanical block to anti-fascicle, change the posterior fascicle go down. If you block the anti posterior fascicle, the axis go anti-fascicle. If you block the left bundle morphology, the tachycardia can change. The normal left bundle morphology, I showed example here. You see, this is a patient we did, we found the, the circle opposite of VT. So we, we tried to find the beautiful dash potential in the area. So we tried to end here. We mechanic bone and change the typical left bundle morphology without second change. So interesting, just say, you found, you can find here the potential, the early potential potential, you just found here, and you aberrate here, and normally can terminate. So I will show you the more important one issues. I take one, two minutes more. Two important issues. How do you operate opposite VT? You have very important issues. You, number one, you look for VT based on percutaneous potential to keep some more forage. The second one, try to give A to extra or can see size capital B. You measure the percutaneous to V, the timing. If both times V time is the same, this is the target set. But this is only used for patients have low ablation before ablations. The second one is issues, the more important issues is how to get cash stable because always the target size over five to seven millimeter because the left bundle or left his is the area. So normally a person do transceptor approach. Because transceptor approach the castle is uh, the move of the castle is up, not up or down. The panel of the castle is never do up the damage here. So we do transceptor approach, the they use the, the transceptor approach, get a six his area. Those early pocket potential are here, the VT can't terminate. Dr. Yang, one yeah. minute. Uh, as, yeah, one minute, okay? Sorry. So after ablation, the post fast the, the old upset of VT is here. Most patients can change the morphology. You see, very sweet in overseas 10 patients with the ablation. With five patients, 50% can change the morphology. So three patients have no previous ablation, two patients had previous ablation. Most present like incomplete left bound of branch morphology. Some patients change complete left bound of block morphology. So, so my favorite approach for left ventricular opposite of VT, you just say we map the early percutaneous potential to a transceptor ablation, to a transceptor approach, look for the earliest activated percutaneous potential, look for the same timing with dual VT and dual sinus one. And this is the target. This you can avoid circular AV block. So, ladies and gentlemen, I make my final my, my conclusion. So, fascicular ventricular tachycardia is a common finding. So, conducting is posterior fascicular network. It's high incidence. It's RS wave on the surface ECG. It's long conduct delay with fragmental percentage potential and abnormal P1, or you can call it natural natural percentage potential. Let's Left positive fascicular block with a linear lesion, close positive fascicular, is very effective to abolish the majority of the IVT. However, this is not index physiology end point. Talk circle the electrical percutaneous potential or P1 or fragmental percutaneous potential is very effective to abolish or almost every IVT, even in patients not induced by VT. So upper cell VT can accuse after ablation of positive fascicular VT. Ablation can be got only the, the potential potential, okay? Because normally 
have low diaspora of farm in this upper sample VT. So after averaging the high in instance of change of case before acute, thank you very much. <laughs>